World War II, a conflict that engulfed the globe from 1939 to 1945, had reached its final stages. It was a time of great tension, with the world divided into two major camps. On one side were the Allied powers, led by the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union. On the other side were the Axis powers, with Germany, Italy, and Japan at the helm. This was a war unlike any other, where the theater of conflict stretched from the icy landscapes of Europe to the scorching deserts of Africa, from the vast expanses of the Pacific Ocean to the crowded cities of Asia. It was a war of ideologies, of power, of humanity struggling against itself. As the tide began to turn in favor of the Allies, an important event took place in the summer of 1945. The leaders of the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union met in Potsdam, Germany. On July 26, they issued the Potsdam Declaration, a statement calling for Japan's unconditional surrender. The Potsdam Declaration was clear and unambiguous. It stated that if Japan did not surrender, it would face prompt and utter destruction. But Japan, under the leadership of its military government, chose to ignore this ultimatum. Despite the looming threat, despite the losses it had already suffered, Japan decided to fight on. This decision was not taken lightly. The Japanese leaders believed that surrender would mean the end of their way of life, the end of their emperor's reign. They were prepared to fight to the bitter end, even if it meant the annihilation of their country. And so, the stage was set. The Allied powers had issued their ultimatum. Japan had made its choice. The world held its breath, waiting for what would come next. The clock was ticking, and the countdown to one of the most significant events in human history had begun. With Japan's refusal to surrender, the stage was set for a decision that would change the course of history. In the face of stubborn resistance, U.S. President Harry S. Truman faced a decision that no leader should ever have to make. As the Second World War raged on, the Allies found themselves grappling with a question of monumental proportions. The Pacific War was proving to be a costly and protracted affair, with Japan's fierce resistance causing escalating Allied casualties. The desire to end the war quickly was growing stronger day by day. This urgency was not just about winning the war, but about saving as many lives as possible. Yet the path to peace was fraught with difficult and controversial decisions. Among these was the proposition to use a weapon of unprecedented destructive power, a weapon born out of what was known as the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project, a top secret initiative, had been underway since 1942. It brought together some of the brightest minds of the era, including Robert Oppenheimer and Enrico Fermi. Their task? To harness the power of the atom for military use. The culmination of their efforts was two atomic bombs, the likes of which the world had never seen. But the decision to use these weapons was not taken lightly. It was a choice fraught with ethical and moral dilemmas. The potential for massive civilian casualties and the long-term effects of radiation were weighed against the potential to bring a swift end to the war and save countless Allied lives. Truman, with the weight of the world on his shoulders, consulted with his advisors, scientists, and military leaders. The discussions were intense, the debates heated. Yet in the end, the consensus was clear. The potential to end the war, to save lives on both sides, outweighed the horrific consequences. And so, the decision was made. The atomic bombs, codenamed Little Boy and Fat Man, would be dropped on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This was a decision that would not only end the war, but would change the course of history and the nature of warfare forever. On August 6 and August 9, 1945, the world witnessed the devastating power of nuclear weapons for the first time. The cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were the targets of these unprecedented bombings. The bombs, codenamed Little Boy and Fat Man, were dropped by the American B-29 bombers, Enola Gay and Boxcar, respectively. Hiroshima, the first city to face the wrath of a nuclear bomb, was virtually obliterated. Within a moment, an estimated 60,000 to 80,000 people perished, accounting for approximately 40% of the city's population. The explosion created a firestorm that consumed the city, leaving only skeletal ruins of buildings and charred remains of what once was a bustling city. Three days later, Nagasaki faced a similar fate. The bomb detonated over the city, resulting in the immediate deaths 
of approximately 40,000 people. The city's structures were flattened, its populace devastated. Survivor accounts from these tragic events are harrowing, painting a vivid picture of the horrors experienced. One survivor from Hiroshima recalled, there was a flash, a brilliant white flash, and then a great booming sound. Next thing I knew, I was buried under rubble and everything was dark. In Nagasaki, another survivor described, there was a sudden, blinding light, and then everything went black. When I came to, I was surrounded by destruction and death. These first-hand accounts bring to life the human cost of the bombings, reminding us of the individual lives affected amidst the staggering statistics. The immediate aftermath of the bombings was marked by unfathomable destruction and loss of life. Those who survived the initial blast were left to navigate a landscape of ruins, dealing with injuries and the loss of loved ones. Many suffered from radiation sickness, the effects of which would continue to plague them and their descendants for decades to come. In the blink of an eye, two cities were reduced to ruins and countless lives were lost or forever changed. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki stand as stark reminders of the devastating power and lasting consequences of nuclear warfare. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki marked a turning point in the war. The unprecedented power of these atomic weapons brought about a swift conclusion to the brutal conflict that had been World War II. Struggling under the weight of such destruction, Japan announced its surrender on August 15, 1945, marking the end of the war. In the immediate aftermath, the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were scenes of utter devastation. Yet, amid the ruins, the resilience of the human spirit began to shine through. Survivors, known as Hibakusha, faced the daunting task of rebuilding their lives amidst the physical and emotional scars of the bombings. Their stories, a testament to their indomitable spirit, are preserved in the annals of history, serving reminders of the devastating impact of nuclear warfare. The long-term effects of the bombings were far-reaching, both on the survivors and the cities themselves. The radiation fallout from the bombs led to a host of health complications for the Hibakusha, including cancer and birth defects in subsequent generations. The cities, too, bore the scars of the bombings, with much of their infrastructure decimated. Yet from the ashes of destruction, Hiroshima and Nagasaki began to rise again. Rebuilding efforts were undertaken on a massive scale, transforming the cities into thriving metropolises once more. Today, they stand not only as bustling cities, but also as symbols of peace and resilience. In the heart of these cities, the peace memorials were established. These memorials, dedicated to the victims of the bombings, serve as stark reminders of the horrors of nuclear warfare. They stand as symbols of hope, advocating for peace and the abolition of nuclear weapons. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were more than just the end of a war. They were a stark reminder of the destructive power humanity holds within its grasp. The bombs not only ended a war, but they also left a lasting legacy on the cities and their inhabitants. They serve as a reminder of the horrors of war, the resilience of the human spirit, and the enduring hope for a peaceful world. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were a tragic event that shaped the course of history. As we delve into the depths of reflection, we recognize that these events, while deeply lamentable, have imparted invaluable lessons to humanity. Firstly, they underscore the devastating power of nuclear weapons, a power that is not only destructive, but also long-lasting. The radiation aftermath in Hiroshima and Nagasaki has left a legacy of suffering that extended far beyond the initial impact, affecting generations unborn at the time of the bombings. This has led to a global understanding of the necessity to control the proliferation of such weapons. Secondly, these incidents have highlighted the importance of diplomacy and peaceful resolution of conflicts. The bombings were a stark manifestation of the horrors of war, especially when technology and human ingenuity are harnessed for destruction. Today, we see a greater emphasis on diplomatic negotiations, peace treaties, and international cooperation. Looking towards the future, the implications are clear. There is a pressing need for continued dialogue about nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. Despite the end of the Cold War, the threat of nuclear weapons remains, with several countries possessing these weapons of mass destruction. Moreover, 
The lessons of Hiroshima and Nagasaki should inform our approach to emerging technologies with potential for misuse. As we stand on the brink of a new era, marked by advancements like artificial intelligence and autonomous weapons, we must remember the lessons of the past and ensure these tools are used for the betterment of humanity, not its destruction. The memory of Hiroshima and Nagasaki also underscores the importance of education and historical awareness. By understanding the past, we can navigate the present and shape the future. In conclusion, the echoes of Hiroshima and Nagasaki reverberate through the decades, reminding us of the perils of uncontrolled technology and the devastation of war. May the memory of Hiroshima and Nagasaki serve as a reminder of the horrors of war and the importance of working towards a more peaceful world.